In this video, I'm going to show you how to use multiple outputs using Contact 3. I will open the plugin from here, then select Contact 3 8 out. That gives me four stereo outputs. So here we have the routing dialog box. We need to select multi channel, create new tracks for instrument outputs, stereo, mono, standard, and also tick audio MIDI combined tracks also send MIDI. There we have it. I'll close that a second just to show you what's going on. I've now created four stereo contact tracks. You can see them there. Tracks 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm opening the VSTI manager to check the output routing. 1, 2, 3 and 4. I'll open the mixer and there they are again. The next thing I'm going to do is to right click here on the name tab to open the track options. So I need to set the output channels. So this is track one routed to MIDI channel one. Click here to move on to the next track and set that to MIDI channel two. Then click the arrow to move on to track three, MIDI channel three, MIDI channel four. Now I'm going to open contact again by right clicking here on the plugin. I'm going to load four instruments. First instrument is Violin Ensemble. Second track is Viola Ensemble. Sustained. There it is. Third track will be Cellos. Sustained. And the fourth will be Bass Ensemble sustained. There it is. So they're all nicely loaded and we need to make sure we have the MIDI output channels routed correctly. MIDI channel 1, that's right. MIDI channel 2, that's going to 2, 3 to 3 and 4 to 4, so that's all looking good. But all the audio outputs are set to stereo 1, so we need to sort that out. Click on the output icon here. We have one stereo track so far. So we need to add three more channels. That's one, two, three. Click on config. Instrument one is already set to the correct outputs, one and two. Click next. Instrument two needs to be outputted to three and four. Next. Instrument three goes to five and six. Next. And instrument four goes to seven and eight. That's good. Quickly rename those. Stereo 2. Stereo 3. Stereo 4. Close the output window. Now we need to make sure we have the individual instruments routed to the correct audio outputs. Violin Ensemble is routed to Stereo 1 already, so that's good. Viola Ensemble needs to be routed to Stereo 2. Cello Ensemble routed to 3. And Bass Ensemble routed to Stereo 4. You could of course add 4 more instruments, repeating those steps. Let's check the ones I've loaded are working. It's important that Track 1 correlates to Instrument 1 in contact. You can do this by visually checking the meters. So that's correct. On to the next one. That's correct. Down onto cello. It's working. Down to the double bass. They all seem to be rooted correctly, so I'll close contact for now. Incidentally, there's one setting worth checking out before you record. You'll notice when I click on individual tracks, they automatically become record enabled and the record and monitor buttons light up as I change track. You can find this setting by right clicking on the monitor button where there's a menu. So if you enable automatic MIDI record switch on current track, it makes life a lot easier. If I disable that and then change tracks, you'll notice they are no longer record enabled automatically. I then have to do it manually which involves more clicking and is more time consuming.
So to re-enable that, right click on the monitor button here, then select automatic MIDI record switch on current track. So now you can move between tracks using the upward and downward arrow key to select the track you want to record on. Sounds a bit tragic to me. I had punch enabled when I was recording those tracks so I need to disable punch here and right click on the in out icons and remove punch in out markers. Also it's worth right clicking on monitor and disabling this automatic MIDI record switch on current track and disabling the monitor and the record button because it gives you a smoother playback when you're changing tracks. So I'm going to quickly add a submix bus and an aux bus. So I'll left click here at the bottom, new submix bus. New aux bus. Add a vary verb to the aux bus. There it is. Next thing will be to route the string tracks to the submix bus. Right click here on the violin label and select output. Go to Submix Bus 1, do that to all four. The same thing can be achieved using the mixer as well. You can route from the bottom here. Now that they are all correctly routed, we can control the levels using the bus fader. We can also control the bus send level to the very verb. Before I continue, I'm going to freeze these tracks. There are several ways to do this, and one way is to left click here on the arrow and select freeze track. Of course, you can always go back and unfreeze if you decide you want to do some more MIDI editing. It's very flexible in that respect. You can also freeze and unfreeze in the manager as well. You can tell that violins and violas have been frozen because there's a tick in the box. So if I tick cellos, they are frozen. And contra. So they're all frozen now. There's a reason why I'm doing this, is to show you how the different solo states work. If you right click on the solo button here, you can see solo, solo exclusive, but there's also global solo modes which comprise of solo safe, solo PFL and solo exclusive. If we use just the standard solo setting and I play, you won't hear any reverb. So if you want to hear reverb, you need to right click and select solo safe. So that's worth remembering. You can click the master solo button at the top here, which turns them all off. Using the standard solo mode, you can select multiple tracks for soloing. You can also right click and select global solo exclusive which allows you to solo only one track at a given time. So now when you solo a track you'll hear just one track exclusively. Hence the name solo exclusive. 
There's also a keyboard command and a menu item for solo exclusive, which is non-global if you need that. And last but not least, there's also global solo PFL. So when I use that solo mode, moving the fader has absolutely no effect. And you'll also notice that there's no reverb either. In case you wondered, PFL stands for Pre-Fader Listen. Anyway, that will do for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something from it. And until next time, goodbye.